right after this song, we're going to actually have Brother Logan Lockett, a uh, student there at IBC, I think one of four from our church this year. Um, so he'll be preaching for us tonight. And then at this time, let's go ahead and stand, and we are going to sing another song. This is my commandment that ye love one another, that your joy might be full. So go ahead and sing out with us this evening. This is my commandment, once again, that ye love one another. Once again, that's for your joy, that it might be full tonight. Here we go. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, that your joy might be full. That your joy might be full, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, that your joy might be full. Well, amen. Wonderful singing tonight. Go ahead and get your Bibles out. Brother Logan, do you want them to stand or sit? All right, go ahead and sit down, get your Bibles ready, and we'll hear from Brother Logan at this time. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for the uh, opportunity to um, preach, and I'm uh, very thankful for the song that uh, Brother Marty um, sang for us. I'm glad that there was a spot for me at Calvary, uh, and there's always going to be more until he comes again. So. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 3, uh, and we're going to be in verses 10 through 15. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 10 through 15. And it says, According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon, build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of, that, of what sort it is. And if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, how he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And then flip over one page to uh, chapter four, verses one through five, which says, let a man so account of us as of the ministries, uh, ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that, that both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. My message title is In Light of Eternity. I heard a message actually uh, that in, at IBC where I attend college um, a message similar to this one. Um, and I was already planning on doing it, but as I was listening to the service, uh, I just felt God leading me as telling you, you need to do this one. So uh, I decided to do this one. When I was around three years old, I put my faith in someone I had never seen. Since then, I have trusted in a God that I have never heard from audibly. Every day with each step of my life, I put my faith and a path set by God that I cannot see. When I die, I have faith that I will go to a place that I've never seen before. Every day I try and live a life that is focused on eternity. A lot of times people go through life and they're focused on the here and now of this life, but the reality of this life is that it goes away quickly. Um, it's here for a moment and then it's gone. The question that I have for you is will your life please my judge, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I have an illustration um, invol involving this yarn. And so let's say here that this here, this amount of string here is your life. Say that this is your life here. 
you know, this is, you put a lot of into your life. You put a lot into it. You put a lot of time and effort into making your life um, something that you can live comfortably with. Um, a lot of times, a lot of people find their pleasures in life and money and the stuff that they have and the stuff that they have in their house. But we need to have a focus on things after this life. We need to have a focus on eternity. So here's your life. And I'm going to take this yarn here, which is going to resemble eternity. So if I take this, here's your life. If I take this and I take it from over here and I stick it in this door, hopefully the fire alarm won't go off. I didn't test this earlier. So if I stick it in here, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get this to stay. It's windy outside. So if I stick it over here on this door and I and I walk and I'm walking and this is a pretty good distance but it's still not eternity those of you can see that this was your life and there's that's a pretty long distance but it's still not eternity if I walk all the way over to this door over here and I put it in that door, that's still, that's a really long distance. But it's still not eternity. If I take this, go all the way around the room and back out that door and I head down to Florida, it's still not eternity. If I hop on a spaceship, spaceship and I head to the moon, it's still not eternity. Now, a lot of people are focused on this, but we should be focused on eternity. You know, there's a lot of people put their faith in what they can see, and the Bible tells us that faith is what we cannot see. But that's not the main preface of my message When you get to eternity, when we read in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, verse 15, I believe, um, it said, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So we put all of our, our time and effort into this, into our life here. and But after we're gone, then, you know, there's nothing left to it is we have no use for it anymore. It says here that when we get to heaven, there's gonna be a judgment that, you know, stuff that we do, that we put all of our time in here is gonna be judged. And it's gonna be, if it was, you know, something done for the Lord, then it's going to last. It's going to be precious stones, gold, silver. And if those of you who might know, if you put those things in a fire, then they become pure. But if you put wood, hay, and stubble in a fire, it burns up, it goes away. So this may beg the question, what is eternal then? In one hand, I want you to take your Bible and raise it up in the air. And in the other hand, I want you to grab the hand of a loved one and raise it up in the air. Those are the only two things that are eternal. Your Bible and people are the only things that are eternal. Now, <clears throat> there are a couple things that might cause us to, you know, have some regrets in life because it says that we will be saved but our stuff won't be, our stuff, our wood, hay, and stubble will be burned away, but we'll have a remembrance of that, I believe. I'll believe that we'll have 
some sort, not really regret, but something similar to that, that we can remember and say, why didn't I live my life, my small life, that is but a vapor for eternity? So why I asked you to do that is because valuing accomplishments above relationships is wrong. Valuing what you can get done over what your, over your family is or over people around you is the wrong idea. We have the wrong idea if we believe that our accomplishments are greater than human lives because our accomplishments, you won't be remembered for those in heaven. You'll be remembered for you know, the crown that you can throw at Jesus' feet. You'll be remembered for all the things that you could have done. And so we, there was a story of this, this guy who was a doctor in a small town. And uh, he said, he said, uh, you know, you can make a whole lot more money doing this somewhere else, but you would hurt your family in the process. Now, what the guy meant is that, you know, his, he had grown up there, his family had grown up there, and everybody, what, you know, he could have made a whole lot more money, he could have made a whole lot more, gotten a whole lot more fame and fortune for being in a bigger city, but with being in a big city comes more problems, comes more things that can tear apart your family. I'm not saying that living in the city is wrong, um, because it's not, but there's great opportunity in a more congested area for wrong things to go right. (laughs) Um, Another thing that we can regret in our life is valuing the temporal over the eternal, which I've been focusing on, but let's say if I go down, I go to vacation um, to New York, I went there for a senior trip, uh, go back and I'm at the hotel and I'm walking around and I'm, I'm seeing the, these pictures and stuff and I'm like, this, this picture won't work, it needs to be changed. Well, and then I go into the bathroom and I'm like, this sink won't work, uh, it needs to be changed. I'm only gonna be there for five days. And then I go over there and I jump on the bed and I sprawl out and I say, this bed has to change too. You would think to yourself, that's kind of ridiculous, but we do the same thing here. You know, we, of course, we all wanna live a comfortable life, but a lot of times we spend too much time trying to be comfortable and stay in our comfort zone when the stuff that we need to be doing um, is out, you know, witnessing, getting souls saved, bringing them to Calvary so they can have a place in heaven with us too. Uh, I've been with the Schuslers. Um, it's kind of funny how everything worked out. Uh, I knew the, the, I went to the missions trip with the Schuslers and uh, they do a lot, um, a whole lot more than I expected. Um, you know, I, I guess I was kind of discounting it since it's the Bahamas, but, um, I, there's a whole lot of, whole lot of work that needs to be done there. And, uh, I wasn't really, I was going into it. I didn't really want to go cause it was outside of my comfort zone and I'd never been on a plane before. That was really what scared me the most. Um, but I went and we had. Uh, 53 people get saved, I think, the week we were there. And uh, it was a uh, definitely a life-changing experience. Um, I know that I've been different ever since then, seeing how they have nothing and we have like everything. And we're so caught up with getting more and better stuff, the newest stuff, when people are playing basketball without shoes. And... Uh, that would hurt my feet. Another, another uh, thing that we can do that would cause us to have regret, regret in eternity 
is missing your calling and not fulfilling your purpose. Uh, that is found in 2 Timothy 4, 6, if you want to turn there with me. For first, or 2 Timothy 4, 6 says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. So you, you spend all this time getting ready, and I know a, a lot of, well, I go to a Bible college that mostly focuses on ministry and pastoral and missions and evangelism. And a lot of people there are not necessarily scared, but they're worried that they might miss what they were supposed to do. Um, they might miss their calling and then therefore not fulfill their purpose, what they were supposed to do here on earth. And we, we spent a lot of times what we need to do, we, we try and work at, you know, trying to hear it. But a lot of times God is just saying, just sit still and I'll tell you. Um, and we try and make it work ourselves, but th how we may have planned it, God doesn't have it planned that way. And we're going to mess it up. That's just how we are. Uh, for my third point, it, sa it says to be aware, uh, be aware of the rewards of eternity. The judgment seat of Christ is an eternity of work, or is a judgment of works and a judgment of individuals. Hebrews four twelve through thirteen. says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature uh, that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. God sees everything, he saw, sees our intentions and everything, and we may be going out there and witnessing to people and getting souls saved, but we were doing it for our own benefit. We weren't doing it for God, and he sees that. He sees that we, uh, that we were doing it for ourselves to get the, pray, the praise from people, and that goes back to accomplishments over relationships. You know, we... we we pride ourselves on what we can accomplish on our own, but we should be focused on, am I doing this for God or am I doing this for myself? Because there's, there's a lot of stuff that happens, there's a lot of things that people do that for the ministry and they have all their self, they're just about themselves. And we need to be selfless and put our, put God above, put God into above everything and put, and work, and when we work on something that we know, that we're focused on him. In sixth grade, I remember I uh, got a bad grade on a report card and uh, I got an F <laughs> in, in English and I played on the basketball team and so I was very disappointed, but I knew that my parents were gonna find out so I couldn't hide it. Um, so I had to tell them. And uh, <laughs> I still remember what they said to me. <laughs> they were very disappointed in me and uh, I, will, I will always remember uh, the disappointment on their faces and in their voice. When I get to heaven, I want to hear my savior who died for me say, well done. I don't want to, I don't want to have any regrets and not be able to cast crowns at my savior's feet. I want to hear well done. I want to, I want to, I want to be able to have, you know, the joy of being able to know that I lived my small life in light of eternity and that I lived for, you know, being able to please my savior And there's a, there's a lot of things that, you know, even I'm 19 years old, I still have a lot of life to go. 
but uh, I, I don't ever really want to see the disappointment of my parents. But more importantly than that, I don't want to see the disappointment of Jesus Christ when I get to heaven and he looks at me and what I've done and I have nothing to give to him. I'm sure that going throughout eternity with remembering his face and his disappointment in me as a Christian will not be fun. It won't be something that I'll look forward to every day is remembering what I heard. I didn't hear well done. I heard my wicked servant. And you know, I I don't want to live the rest of my life thinking, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to, you know, say that we need to live only for uh you know, only thinking about eternity because there's some stuff that we do need to take care of with our families, but we should be doing it thinking with God in mind. So my question to you today is, do you want to hear well done or remember his disappointment in you forever? And, you know, when I, when I came home and I gave that report card to my my parents and they looked at it and then they looked at me and then they looked back at it and then they looked back at me. I knew uh, what was about to happen, but I didn't want it to happen. Um, but it didn't change what happened. Um, we had a deal at our house that if you didn't uh, pay for, or that if you didn't uh, you know, pass all your classes, because they would buy me basketball shoes every year, if we, uh, if we didn't pass, then we'd have to pay them back. And I didn't have any money <laughs> to pay them back. So yeah, they were gracious, and I think I didn't end up having to do that. But I was still, uh, I was still, um, I still remember what they said and the, the disappointment in their faces. And so my question to you again is, do you want to hear well done or do you want to remember for the rest of your life what, how it could have been? Brother King, you can come up here and close as you see fit. Go ahead and bow our heads for invitation. Thank you for that message, Logan. A very powerful and what's really important in our lives, you know, everything that we try to accomplish in this short, short span of our lifetime or what really matters is, like he said, the things in eternity. And we want to be well pleasing to what God has for us and the rewards that he has for us because they're much greater than what um, we get here on this earth. Um, go ahead and stand for our invitation. And our invitation will be just as I am. If you need a book, it's page 342. Amen. Thank you, Brother Logan. We appreciate that. If you'll go ahead and go to the back, we'll have um, people come by and shake your hand. Um, please encourage him. Go by and shake his hand. Let him know that you're praying for him as he does his studies in college. And he did a good job tonight, don't you think? Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Sean if he'll close us in prayer, please.